Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the pop line tutorial which is following from the pop circle tutorial. It's slightly more complicated but we're just going to go through it and um, show you how I do it to get the precise pop effect. So we're going to go ahead and set up a 3D scene. If you want to know why I use 2.79 just check the video link in the description. So we need to delete this cube. So we can delete this cube by pressing delete key. We can press the X key or we can go to object and delete in our 3D viewpoint menu at the bottom here. So we're just gonna go and delete it. I prefer delete key. We're gonna go ahead and press seven on the numpad and that seven will take us to the view where the Y axis is on the vertical and the X axis is on the horizontal, which is, um, one of my, which is probably my favorite view because I can, antici I can um, anticipate the movement of things because the X axis is traditionally on the horizontal and the Y traditionally on the vertical. We can see that we are indeed on that axis because Y in the bottom left corner, we see Y going up and X going to the side. So we know that we're on that axis and we are simulating the Cartesian plane. So we have it right here. Let's go ahead and snap the camera to this view. So we're going to hit Control Alt and Zero on the numpad. So that's Control Alt and Zero on the numpad to snap our camera to the current view that we have in our 3D port. So we have the camera here. We know that we do have the camera here because outside is a dark gray and inside this box is a light gray and we can select the box showing, showing us that we are in this is an object and it is the camera object so if we press zero toggle out we can see that the camera is indeed snapped to the viewpoint good so we're going to go back into the camera mode and then we're going to create a circle you can hit shift a to add that circle it's a mesh that we're adding or you can go to add and mesh and circle go ahead and do that we're going to place this circle about here you know and um Let's just click here too. Let me just delete this circle and create it one more time. About there. And before we move it up there again, just gonna go ahead and change the vertices in the bottom left. It's 32 right now, but we want it to have 64 vertices and that will make it a lot smoother. Good, so now we have it at 64 vertices. We can go ahead and transform it. If you move the circle before you do this step, this will disappear and you'll be unable to do it again. So once you create the circle immediately afterwards and you want to change the vertices count or any other option here, you know, then do that before you begin to translate this circle. So now we have it, we're gonna move it up on the Y, slightly on the X. Good, so we have space on the right hand side because we're gonna need it. Then we're gonna to go to our edit properties editor and we're gonna to go to the mesh tab, which is connotated by three meshes connected by three edges to make us um, a triangle mesh. And we're going to navigate past normals, texture space, vertex groups, and we're gonna to move to shape keys. We're gonna add four shape keys, one, two, three, and four with the first being the basis and the other three being the keys that we're going to morph with. Um, so the third key that we're going to, we're going to name it and we're gonna call this a right finish. And we're gonna name the second key, we're gonna call it right move. And we're gonna name the first key and we're gonna call it right flip. Um, in fact, we need to add one more key and we're gonna call this left flip. Good, so let me just move this up a bit, make the left flip on the top. Um, most of these have to do with the right hand side um, and we can indeed do it with the left hand side also, but you know, for this purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna use the right hand side for the most part. So let's move on into the circle now. Make sure that the left or right flip is select. Well, let's just use the left flip first. It's selected and I'm gonna press tab and we see that all the vertices are selected, you know, and we want to deselect that. So we're gonna press A on the keyboard. Good, then we're gonna to go to our boundary border select, sorry, uh, or I call it box select. And you can go to your 
or if you don't want if you don't know the shortcut for which is B we can also go to our file um, menu down here in our 3d viewpoint go to select go and you'll see border select at the bottom or at the top depending on your your page your configuration of your um, monitor that you're reading this on or that you're running the program on so you'll see border select right here so we're gonna press B and we're gonna select the left side the left half of this circle including the middle vertices so that selects the left side of this circle including the middle vertices good and what we're going to do there we're going to pull out this plus box right here which will open up our local coordinates and what we want to do we're going to go to medium under transform go to x click on that and we're going to navigate to the negative sign and we're just going to backspace that negative sign and press enter good next once we do that we're going to we're going to um well before we do that to know what we're actually doing here we want the left side vertices to completely cover the vertices on the right hand side to be perfectly on top of them that's what we're aiming for so the first thing to do that is to remove the negative sign um, from the medium transform and that will move it to this position the next thing I'm going to do is that we're going to flip it perfectly on the y-axis so that it lands perfectly on the vertices on the right hand side and those are the vertices that are not selected we're going to go and press S S for scale X for the X axis and we're going to hit it on neg we're going to click we're going to press negative one and then press enter so that's S for scale X for the X axis and we're going to hit negative one good and that will place the vertices that were selected squarely on top of the vertices on the right hand side then we're going to press tab come out of edit mode and the left flip key for it, key um shape key has stored that information so if we incre if we increase the value bar we can see that that information has indeed been stored good and we're going to do the same for the right flip but instead we're going to do it for the right side good and now you see why we call it the left flip also so we're going to do for the right flip too so right now we have the left selected and it remembered the selection state from what we were doing in the left flip so what we're going to do is just press Control and I and we're going to move to the right flip and that will invert the selection so Control and I for invert good and we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did with the left side but instead the medium is positive so we're going to add a negative sign so where we took away a negative sign for the left flip we're going to add it for the right side good and then we're going to go to s x and negative one good and that gives us the perfect flip on the right hand side good so we're going to go to the right flip um and let's just do it so that we can see what's actually happening we see that it is indeed flipping on the right hand side awesome so for the next step let's go ahead and um, move to the right move and we're going to select everything on the right hand side here you know including the middle and we're just going to navigate we're just going to pull it out on the x-axis by pulling this handle good and we can pull it at any length we want to any length we want the pop line to be any length but for, for this purpose of this tutorial and I suggest you do it longer than shorter because you can always reduce the value bar to get a shorter value but you can't increase the value bar to get a longer one so do it as long as you wish but for this tutorial I'm just going to do it at this length um, so that we can see it in the camera viewpoint so we have it at the length here and then we're going to press tab and come out of it and the next step is that we want to increase the value of the right move and also of the right flip and that will help us to do the next move and the final move which is the right finish good so what we're going to do here is that we're going to hit shift and a 
or you can go to add in your file menu and we're going to add a plane good with this plane we're going to press tab to go into edit mode or you can go into edit mode down here by selecting the object we're going to delete these first two vertices you know so select them by right clicking and holding shift delete with the vertices and you're going to be left with these two vertices here next we're going to go and to our 3d viewpoint file menu we're going to select the magnetic tool and that's the snap the snap tool or the magnet tool and we want to snap vertices so we're going to select this drop down box and go to vertex we're going to move this these two this line here this edge that we have from the plane along the x-axis to the opposite side and we want these two these two vertices to snap to the very edge of these two so just going to have it snap good um, so for that we're just going to press G and we see that there's a magnetic force that's helping us to snap to the exact position of the vertice next we're going to duplicate it with shift and D and then we're going to press G once more and we want it to snap to the second vertice on the circle on this semicircle right here and this will help guide us here as to where we're going to put do this will help guide us for the next step sorry so we're going to go into our shape keys with this uh, pop selected and we're going to go to right finish good and we're going to go into tap press tab it's how it has the right side selected and right now we want the left side selected so we're just going to go ahead and hit control and i for invert good and then we're going to move it along the x-axis right down to our guide good and for our guide we really want our guide to snap to the second line so if we press G it will see it will automatically snap to this line so just zoom in we're zooming in with the middle mouse button by the way and we're panning with the middle mouse button pressed and held, holding shift at the same time so now that we have that the next step is to scroll the, va the value slider down and we see that it covers the uh, the um it covers exactly the flip of the circle on the other side so we have all the components now to create a pop so let's go ahead and just set the right flip and we're going to demonstrate this by animating it so that we see that we have the pop so basically what we've done is created all of the elements necessary to create a pop so that we don't have to use the transforms in blender as shape um, um, instead we can use the shape keys so we can change the values at any time we wish to change them and this makes it more versatile when doing pop effects so you can do all sorts of pop effects with this so all sorts of line pop sorry effects with this so what we're going to do we're going to animate this first up we need to go to our right flip good our right flip right here and we're going to insert keyframe oh instead of our right flip let's use our left flip instead good use our left flip instead and our right move so let's have the left flip at one insert keyframe good and then at around let's go to 25 frames let's have the right move insert keyframe good and let's go back to the first one and go to right flip and insert keyframe and we're 
right clicking to insert keyframe here good and as we move to the right move let's see the right move make sure right move is zero let's see what we have good so we have our start for our pop good and around this time we want our left flip to go to zero to go to zero so if we look at it now we can see that oh not to go we want our left flip to um to zero about here good so we can see that it's moving out so the quicker that we have the left click left flip turn to zero from its initial start out the better it is so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this keyframe here and delete it good great so this is looking like the pop good and now that it's reached out to the end at frame 20 we want the right move to the right finish to start it's going to insert keyframe on the right finish and by 35 we want the right finish to catch up good and then lastly we want when the right from the right finished comes to the end we want about here about which is about um if i just zoom this up for you this is about frame what now 33 at about frame 33 we want to have the left flip activate from zero and then move from zero to close as one and there we have our pop effect you know, a very simple pop effect from left to right you know um, very effective you know, and we can do so much with this do so much with this effect good but we have the option to um to pop this so let's go ahead and just change this to let's just add a fill to it so that we can see it a bit better diffuse and go to shaless and good and press f for face and play it and we have our pop effect good I know it may seem a bit complicated doing it this way but it's good when you do get a handle on it doing this way doing it straight shape keys because the versatility you have with this is pretty much endless once you understand how to edit it and how you got to, how you came to do it you know and you can go ahead and decrease the size and you can increase the size to any size you wish you know place at any place you wish you know increase or decrease the speed of it you know by going to the dope sheet and adding a bit more speed you know and that's very good for you because you know you have full control over it versus using say a transform to create this effect so that is the pop line effect you will need it for other tutorials incoming if you enjoy this tutorial give it a thumbs up if you have any ways to make the tutorial arm um, or to add suggestions as to the running or effects of that blender has that could make the tutorial easier or something that could be explained easier then I appreciate that
that helps me, that helps the community, that helps everyone. So go ahead and do that. Um, if you, if it helped you in any way, and if you liked it too in any way, just go ahead and subscribe because I've got more coming. But until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design a new door. Later.